Thank you, Romina. It's nice to get introduced by the former environment minister, for the person working in international organization. Uh, thanks. We, we saw her in negotiating in Montreal Protocol in many of the regions. So thanks for the introduction. First of all, I am not Dr. Rajendra Pachauri, in case you are mistaken. <laughs> I'm, as she explained, it's Rajendra Shendi. Uh, yes, I, I did share along with the others in IPCC a uh, Nobel Peace Prize of 2007 because I was one of the coordinating lead author for the chapter related to ozone layer protection and climate change. So, uh, Joe just played a very short music. You must have heard just starting before uh, a music, uh, a song played by a very well known Thai artist, uh, Tata Yang. It was sort of a upbeat and it's sort of celebrating. And we just now heard when that uh, this is not a time for celebration. But let me pause for a moment to say that Tata Yang was trying to convey in her upbeat, very inviting, very emotional music. Uh, and making us remember about the achievements of the Montreal Protocol. She wanted us to pause for a moment to say what exactly we have done up till now. And at the same time, apart from remembering our past, she also wanted to make us remember our future. And let's see what, what we have in front of us. It may be slightly out of place to have upbeat music in the midst of crisis that we are facing. What is, you may be guessing, what is the celebrations when we have food crisis, we have fuel crisis, we have financial crisis, we have water crisis. And on top of it, we also have a new crisis where fuel gets mixed with water and it comes to our doorsteps due to the high oil spill. There's another crisis which I call it fuel mixed with water. So we are all surrounded by this crisis. So what is the celebrations of Montreal Protocol? These people are talking, which have come together like UNEP, UNESCO, IGSD and, and a, a FECO and MEP from, from China. But let me tell you exactly about 25 years back this month, I'm talking about May 1975, an article came in a magazine called Nature, very prestigious scientific magazine, which talked about ozone depletion over in Antarctica, a frozen continent, which had not started melting as yet in 1975, saying that the world is facing an ecological disaster in case that ozone depletion spreads over all over the world. And that shook the world. Those scientists who wrote that papers, who later on went on to win the Nobel Prize for Science, for the Physics, were there to celebrate this 25th year anniversary of ozone depletion in Cambridge, in a symposium on 7th May. They were also making us remember our past and also making us remember our future challenges. And uh, you, journalist, picked up that science story and all that ozone depletion as an ozone hole. And that was a sort of a igniting spot. That shook the world. That shook the world to take action on the story of ozone hole. So scientists were talking about absolutely technical terms of what is ozone depleting chemicals, polar stratospheric clouds, Dobson units, which even me as an engineer was difficult to understand what they are talking. But you did the job by simplifying that language to say that there is an ozone hole. And none of you, either me, nor anybody in this world, can sleep quietly <coughs> if your roof has a hole and it is raining. I don't think anybody will spend time arguing, negotiating, squirming on the seat, doing nothing, being passive. When your roof is leaking, you will better take a ladder, go off the roof, seal it, come back and sleep. And we see that in many other environmental treaties, this is not happening. Because you have not yet translated the science of global warming into the simple sentence which is called as ozone hole. So now you have to find a terminology to make people shake, not sleep and do something to correct it.